Hello again and welcome to SEO Online with Victor Campos. So uh, we looked at um, the second part of my handout here on the last video. Now we'll back up and look at the first part. So this is pretty straightforward what I'm talking about here. We've got various links. The big concept is that we need to use the Google Webmaster Tools and the Bing Webmaster Tools to check our effectiveness. If we engage in any of the conversion goals that we've got on page two, we need to see are they working? We need to see how much traffic we're getting, impressions. And we need to see how many clicks we're getting to products, that's conversions. So we'll take a moment to set up these webmaster tools. And whenever I teach this, I cannot teach it exactly how everyone will see it because everyone's setup is a little bit different. So as I said on the beginning of the class, I'm going to assume you've got a website. And I'm going to assume you've got a WordPress website. If you've got anything else like Wix or Weebly, uh, Squarespace, Dreamweaver, etc., you will be able to accomplish what I'm talking about here, but just in a slightly different way. And what would be very helpful for you to do would be to do a search for set up Google Webmaster Tools Weebly, and you'll find the article on how to set this up directly on your particular setup. Okay, I'm going to start with Bing. Bing is the second biggest search engine. It's got about 20% market share and growing. Uh, so 20% of the people of the world use Bing as their search engine, which is hundreds of millions of searches. And Bing is increasing in market share because it is heavily aligned with various Windows properties. Microsoft is behind Bing, and Microsoft is behind the biggest computer operating system, which is Windows. A majority of people in the world use Windows. So Microsoft is going to promote their search engine in their product over the competition, which is Google. So Google at one point had probably around 80% market share, and it's decreasing. Maybe you've never heard of Bing, you've never used Bing, and you don't know anyone that's used Bing. But again, 20% of the people that use the web and search use Bing. So it behooves us to optimize our sites for Bing as well. I'm going to open a web browser, and then I'll go to bing.com slash toolbox. Bing is a search engine, just like Google. People use it to search. Again, you may have never used it, but 20% of people do. Especially if you've got a newer Windows 8 or Windows 10 computer, that's what you're searching with. If you've got a Windows device, like a Surface or a Windows phone, it searches with Bing. People can, of course, change that over to Google or Yahoo, whatever they want. But most people just search, don't care what they search with, assume that it might be Google or whatever, and then they get a result. So we are going to use the, web, the, the Bing Webmaster tools here. Um, the reason we would use this then is to get more users to our site and to track conversions, track impressions, all of that. We are going to submit our site so that the search engine knows about us, just like Google. We're going to do that eventually. If we are new to Bing, we will get a $100 advertising credit. That's paid SEO, which is valuable. So here, if you've got already a Microsoft email account, we can use it to sign in. So if you have an Outlook email address, Hotmail, Live.com, any Microsoft account, we can use it to sign in. If you don't have one, you can click the Sign Up link, and there will be a process where you need to create an account. Either your existing email can be used, or you can get a new email. So you want to fill all of this in. It'll take you a moment to do so, and once you do and proceed, you will get to the main Bing screen. So I'm going to assume you've either got a a Microsoft account and simply signed in or you've signed up. Your screen may look a little bit different than mine simply because I'm using an account that already exists. But if anything is vastly different, don't forget to email or contribute to the discussion board and I'll help you out. This screen will list all my websites and I can manage more than one website so I can see messages from Bing about the the health of my site, are there broken links or other problems? I can see clicks from search appeared in search. These are their terms for conversions and impressions. 
I will be able to see how many times did people see my website when they did a Bing search and how many times did people actually click impressions conversions Bing and Google both will crawl my website meaning they will send out their robots to traverse every link on my website they will go to the home page and the about page they will go check out every page of my site they will crawl my site then if it finds new and relevant content it will index it it will save a link to that page on my site in the Bing database in the Google database so when someone searches some keywords guess what you've got blog posts with those keywords that will help you get found make sure you also take the time once in a while to read the blog posts here about the latest information like sitemaps and so forth so what we do on this screen is we need to submit our website either at the top add a site or the button add a site both of these ways will give us a way to add a website both of these ways will give us the ability for Bing and Google to know that we exist so let's say I'm gonna add a site back on the home page here Victor's Bakery is com this is not a real site but I'm gonna to try to submit it we get a question at a sitemap and about uh, the time of day you may get more questions than me because again I've already filled out this account but if you go through those questions that it asks you and fill them in truthfully uh, it's pretty straightforward and that will help you to again get submitted to the search engine a sitemap is a list of every single page on your site uh, but it's a special document that you don't really write a list of all of your pages you have your uh, web software create the sitemap for you as a special XML file and then you submit it so if you don't know about any of this don't worry about it we'll touch on it later but if you do know that you've got a website sitemap you want to add its address there oftentimes it's something like this the address slash sitemap.xml but unless you know that that file that address on your site exists don't fill this in don't assume that that's your sitemap link Bing and Google are going to be browsing your website once in a while to check if something is new if something is new it can add it to the index well that means that they will be sending traffic to your site which in theory could slow down your site if you have a particular time of day that most people visit your site it might be a good idea to tell the search engines Bing and Google don't visit my site during these times don't slow down my site during these times I don't know the times when people visit my site so I won't select anything and I can edit the sitemap or the time anytime I want later so I won't add anything to those at the moment we have then three options to verify that we are the true owner of this website because what's to stop your competitor from setting up Bing or Google webmaster tools and basically spying on your traffic this is what will stop them verifying that you are the owner of that website because these actions here only you can perform we will choose one of these actions and accomplish them and then we'll be verified I'm gonna say right away don't even do option three option three is very complex I don't even attempt this one and I've had over 15 years experience in this stuff so don't worry about option three you're gonna do one or two one is that you will download this file that Bing is giving to you and upload it to your website upload it to your server somehow using a file manager an FTP client something like FileZilla or CyberDuck using some software to upload this file to your server your website address which then Bing will look for once you click verify 
If that file exists, Bing will verify and you'll have access to your data. The other way is copying and pasting this line of code into your website in the meta section of your website's code. So if you're able to edit your website, there's going to be a section about head, and you're going to copy this line of code here and paste it into head. Again, depending on your website software, Dreamweaver, Wix, whatever, there will be different ways to do it. I'm going to show an example with WordPress, and maybe you've got WordPress and will be able to do the same thing, or maybe you've got a different software and you need to look up how to add webmaster tag to my Wix, how to add Google Analytics to my Wix. So I'm going to go to a website example that I have to show you how I would do this in WordPress. So the best way to verify a WordPress site is with a plugin. There are several plugins that accomplish these tasks. So if I look at the plugins in this particular site, the ones that I will recommend are Google Analytics by Monster Insights and Jetpack by WordPress. That's what I would use for setting up Google Analytics later on. And for the moment, since I'm setting up Bing, Webmaster Tools, Jetpack. Once this plugin is installed, I will then have a section under Tools, Available Tools, where it will show Website Verification Services. And you're going to copy and paste the line of code from Option 2 into the box for Bing. When you do Google, you'll do the same process with Google and then you'll paste into the Search Console box. You'll save this screen, return to Bing, and click Verify. For this fake account, it's not going to work if I verify. I'll get a big red X. If it did work, then when I return back to the Bing home screen, it'll list my site and start listing stats. These stats are invaluable feedback to show me how well I am accomplishing my goals of SEO. So again, because everyone's website is different, I cannot show that step by step. So I'm going to move on now to Google. As my handout says, I can go to google.com slash webmasters where I can sign in to the search console. So you'll need to supply a uh, valid Gmail address, a valid Google address. If you don't have one, you can create one. If your screen looks very different than mine, again, I may have already set this up, so if your screen is a little different, that's okay. This is a relatively new testing account here for me, so it's going to ask you to set up your website. Now what you have to be aware of with Google as opposed to Bing is that Google does differentiate different versions of your site. So here it's asking me to add my site. So I would type HTTP colon Victor's Bakery dot biz dot com, whatever. I would also eventually need to add the property Victor's Bakery www Victor's Bakery. Google does differentiate between the non-WW version and the WW version of my site. So I'm going to add one, then the other. Google also differentiates between security and non-security. Right now I'm adding my non-secure version, HTTP. Well, if I have HTTPS security on my website, I also need to submit that one, as well as the WWW version. So I would probably submit up to four versions of my site to Google, whereas I don't have to worry about that on Bing 
theirs works just fine with one address. Now, a note on the secure version, unless you paid extra for security on your service provider, you don't have security. You don't have that lock in the corner of the address. You don't have security built in. These providers are going to sell you security for 60 to to $100 a year for you to have that lock so that then you can have HTTPS. So I'm going to start with the non-secure version, non-WW version. I will add that property. And then I will get methods as well. A few methods to verify. This has got the recommended method of a file upload. Yours may recommend you something else. So I've got the file upload, which is the same as Bing when it asked me to upload a file. So if you were able to verify Bing with a file upload, do the same thing for Google. If instead you had to do the code, it might be under alternate methods. In my case it is, and it's under HTML tag. There's that line of code that I need to use to verify my site. So again, in WordPress, I would need to find the spot where I would add that code. And using the Jetpack plugin, I've got a website verification service and a Google Search Console box. So I would copy that code, paste it into the box, verify, and then it'd be verified. Every other method that it's suggesting, I don't recommend, especially the domain name provider. I don't recommend those other methods. Um, I found them a little more complex than they need to be. If you've got a Google Analytics account, you can use that to sort of vouch for this Google Search Console account. That may work. And if you've got a Google Tag Manager account, you may use it to vouch or verify your Search Console. So I'm going to assume that I copied and pasted the code. I'm going to verify here. Of course, it'll give me an error. But if this were set up properly, I would then have an account set up on my Search Console where I could track conversions. Lastly, Google Analytics. I need to set up also another Google property here, google.com slash analytics. Click at the top right, sign in, and select to sign into Google Analytics. It may ask you for your password or it may take you directly. I haven't set this up before, so it's going to say fill in these steps. If you have used it before, it'll take you directly. So I need to sign up. It may ask you a variety of questions about your business and such. Go ahead and fill that in. And eventually it'll ask you for setting up your account, account name, property. So let me give you the example like this. In my company, we deal with a lot of clients. So we would have a client called Mexican Restaurant Number One. And it has a property of their main website. And the URL of HTTP Mexican Res dot com. Because I deal with different clients, I create a different account, sort of like a different folder to organize the different clients into. And in each client, I can track their main website, I can track their shopping cart, I can track their YouTube, I can track a variety of properties of a client. So then I name what I'm tracking. I give it the address. So what if I'm tracking their YouTube? I would say then here, YouTube account and put in their YouTube address, youtube.com slash mxrest. For yourself, you'll probably just put the name of your business. You're most likely tracking your main website and your website, victorsbakerybiz.com. This doesn't matter if you put the WW version or not, but it does matter if it's the secure version or not. Again, most likely you don't have the secure version of your site, so leave that HTTP. Select an industry and category for your business. The data sharing features. Would you like your data to be shared throughout different Google properties? 
this doesn't affect your results but it's up to you to decide what to put here get tracking ID there's a bunch then of um, agreement items that you need to read once you do you accept them if you don't accept them you can't use Google Analytics unfortunately and then what we get is this screen that has your website tracking code this code I need to add to my website and there's only one way basically to do this we don't have the three ways like a file upload or other ways that we saw uh, on webmaster tools with Google with Bing we have to use this special JavaScript code so it's saying copy and paste this code into every web page you want to track then you would use the plugin monster insights and check the settings Well, you, you will need to then click a few buttons to connect your site with analytics. So it is a bit of a process. Bing has one setup. Google has two setups. Once you've got all that done, then we can start to track impressions and conversions. That'll be on a future video. But the point is then now you'll have an account on your home screen of Google Analytics where it will show you sessions, duration, bounce rate, goal, conversion rate. You'll see this valuable data. You'll see this data that you get from your efforts to help you get found from previous things that we've talked about and more things that we'll talk about. So as we wrap up this video for this week, next week we'll be talking about more content creation advice how to use your keywords and so forth and then checking this data to see how well how effective you've been. So come back next week.